Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be making a simple backdoor in Python. It's going to use only the modules that come with Python pre-installed. So we're not going to install any external libraries or modules, that way making it easier for us to use it and for the victim to activate it. Obviously, this only works if the victim has Python installed. So let me first show you how it works. Right here is our simple backdoor in Python. And the first thing we have to do is set up the listener. Now, obviously, if you know anything about hacking or if you have ever made your own virus or something, like that you would know that there has to be for example in a, when you're deploying a payload there has to be one listener and then the victim so listener is the hacker he listens for incoming connections and the victim runs the malicious program right so let's navigate to our netcat right here and we going to start netcat with holding shift key and right click open the powershell and then uh, pick netcat 64 and then listen to the port 4444 why well because our back door here uh, is connecting to port 444 and as you can see I'm listening from the same PC so that means it's just I'm just going to connect to myself obviously you can do this over the virtual machine and similar stuff like that or you can do it from one PC to another but make sure that you change the IP this is my internal IP you can check this by pressing Windows key and R and typing CMD and then writing in IP config and there you have it Right here, IPv4 is my internal IP address, meaning not the external, just the internal. Uh, let's check this out if it works. So let's start the listener, and we're listening on our IP on port 4444 for incoming connections. This right here is our backdoor, which will open an incoming connection. There we go. It says hooking onto the port, and right here we have the shell on. And right here now we can execute commands which we want. LS is going to release out the directories we're currently in. Then we can do system info. We can also do net LAN show profiles. We can show wireless profiles. We can see IP config, and obviously it's the same machine. But there is some differences in trolling. So as we're running this we're right here from the netcast and right here from the Python, and from the Python we're forwarding the command to the PowerShell. There's going to be some differences, obviously. Let's just make a new directory. So let's make there a new dir. So obviously this will make a new directory in the directory where our backdoor is. And right here you can see it's new dir. And now right here we can make dir a new new dir. And obviously right now we are making a new directory here and not inside of it. Now you can actually enter new dir and then do make dir new 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 and it's still gonna make it right here. Why? Well, because it's running the PowerShell every time from this location. In other words, the location where your Python file is. But worry not, we have the solution for that. So we can chain the commands like this, make their www and ls www. And it will actually list the directories from www. And we got nothing, obviously, because there is nothing inside. Let's make a new custom directory. Let's call it custom, custom dir. And right here, if we ls again, we're going to notice that we're not inside of our www. So how do we navigate to the custom dir? And how do we navigate inside it to see our new text file? Let's call it new. So in order to navigate to the new custom dir, we can just use the quotes right here. Uh, make sure that you put them here and not right here. Because sometimes Windows uses the backslash and Python ignores that if you put a character after it. So just put them at the beginning. There you go. We have the reg editor and the works.py right here. I also made a better version of this, but I will cover this in a new video. So with this one, you can just do simple stuff that you might be interested in. Maybe you want to build on top of this, and I appreciate that. I actually respect that. And let's uh, actually show the code. So right here, so right here, we're trying to use the most default libraries that Python has. In other words, we're not trying to install any other libraries or modules. It's the same thing. So first we're importing sys and argv. So why do we need this is we need to find the name of our file so you can change the name of your uh, backdoor. So in our case argv and then if you put the count zero it's going to actually pick the name of the program no matter what the name is. So this is why we need this. We're importing the OS because of some OS functions that we're going to use. I don't think we're using it much but I just like to have it there. So let's take a look if we're using it anywhere. We're actually not. So I'm pretty sure you can just pop this out because we uh, I actually switched this with subprocess. Uh, so we have a subprocess and we're going to use this to run the PowerShell commands and we'll show you that later. And we have the socket uh, which is just going to allow us to connect. Now, fun fact about this is if you upload this specific program right here to the to any to virus total or something like that, no antivirus will notice it as a threat because you're expecting it. All right, th this is for programming, so you know you just 
willingly connecting to it. But what the attacker is actually doing is just finding someone who has Python and then running this code on their machine. And then they have a pretty solid persistence. Now, obviously not this code because it's not advanced enough, but I'm going to show you that in the next video. Uh, how to add it into the booth and stuff like that, or how to add it to the task scheduler and stuff like that. So this one just uh, pretty much attempt, uh, attempts connection all the time. And also one thing you can do is you can make these programs uh, hidden. You can make them run differently. You can make the PYW, if I'm not wrong, uh, which runs basically and uh, shows no output. And all these prints, you don't need them. But uh, yeah, it's just there for demonstration. So let me just explain this function. There's only this function and we're calling it. So let me explain how it goes. So first, what we're doing is attempting to connect to the hacker by trying to do this. Now, to do this. Now, obviously, if this fails, we have some exceptions. Uh, we have the accept connection refused, if the connection is obviously refused. Timeout error if the connection times out. And the connection reset error, which basically means that the hacker himself closed the connection. So, and by the way, all of this come with uh, calling the shell again. So they're just going to re-attempt to connect. And then right here we have our try. Uh, let's just separate it a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. And this exception on try. So if try fails, we're going to have this exception and any exception basically. And we're going to print it out with error saying and the exception. So nothing special here. We're going to send it through our socket to our hacker. Now obviously in order to transfer everything over the sockets, you need to transfer them to bytes and similar stuff like that. So we're going to use encoding UTF-8 in our message, which is the a variable that contains our is our error and the text error. So let's get back to our try. Here's where the magic happens. So the first thing you need to know is you're going to have to change this obviously uh, to your internal IP. Uh, I already mentioned how that works. And you have the L port right here. You can pick any port basically. Make sure that they're not like used. So it's 443 or 80. It might you might have some problems if you do that. So just pick something like this or 1337 or whatever you want. Then you we are defining your so socket dot socket and inside of it socket.af.inet and socket.socketstream. So we're defining what type of connection we want to use in order for us to connect to our attacker. We're using our socket to connect to the L host and the L port. In other words, we're connecting to this IP and this port. Basically, when this goes through, we're hooking on to the L host and the L port. Obviously, you wouldn't want this because your victim can see your uh, L host and L port. You're basically your IP and the port that it's connecting to. So as I said, just remove all the prints, but this is for the demonstration. And then we have the while true. So while this is ongoing, we're going to try this. And if it fails, we're going to accept and just return to the shell and retry this again. Now, of course, you can modify your exceptions however you want. So basically, this one is pretty much referring to the PowerShell command failing. Although this is mostly not going to happen, there's going to be cases where it's just going to return nothing. Most of the commands that it returns is going to be in the format B and then these uh, quotes, and then there's going to be the text. And you're going to notice a lot of the R and the N. This is because it's in the bytes format and it has to stay that way in order for data to get transmitted. Ideally, it would be great if the hacker himself would have a Python program for handling this backdoor where it would uh, take in the input and re replace every backslash R, backslash N with the, with the equivalent of it uh, so everything looks nicer and tidier. First, we're defining the header. This is just going to be everything. We're just going to send this every time the hacker connects or when the command executes. So we're sending that and we're using the sock.send and we're sending the header, but we have to encode it first uh, because it has to be byte. And then we're using the CMD, which is basic. I call it CMD because it's the command that we're going to get from the attacker and we're going to receive information in other words the command 1024 you can increase this if you want and we're going to decode it as utf8 then we're going to replace all the new lines because sometimes it just happens to have new lines uh, by the way you need to decode with utf8 and stuff like that because you don't want bytes uh, going through because sometimes they can they can be messy as i said with the b and the quotes uh, and then we're going to try to give this command to the powershell so in other words the pros right here uh, is actually the subprocess.p open, which basically means we're going to run the PowerShell. We're going to provide this with this argument and we're going to make sure that it goes through. Uh, these are just the parameters. You actually have to have these uh, because it's just going to make, make it easier for you. I'm not going to explain why. So basically this line, what it does is we're defining the variable in it. We're putting 
the sub process of vopen, basically giving our PowerShell the command. So the out and the err uh, is going to be proc.communicate, which basically means we're going to store the response in these two variables. And obviously the variable that we want to know is the out. Uh, in here, these are the information. So if you request IP config, it goes through here, and then it goes here. And the ERR is other type of data, but you don't need this currently. And you can uh, also put that as well in the response if you want, but I don't find it necessary. And then we're sending this back to our attacker. If you want to know more about what I did, and I have certainly done some things, uh, I'm going to cover that in the next video. So there it is. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.